Hi, I'm Nick. In previous videos, we've seen how to install an Easy Can on liquid cooled R series boxer twins, oil cooled R series boxer twins, twin cylinder F series motorcycles, and K1600 six cylinder motorcycles. Now that you've installed the Easy Can on your motorcycle and connected your accessories to it, you need to configure the Easy Can so that your accessories work the way you want them to. In this video, I'll also show you how to operate your accessories using the Easy Can. The procedures apply to any BMW that has an Easy Can fitted. To configure your Easy Can, download the configuration tool by going to hexeasycan.com. Click the software link. If you're using a Windows computer to configure the Easy Can, Click the Hex Easy Can Configuration Software for Windows PC link. If you are using a Mac to configure the Easy Can, click the Hex Easy Can Configuration Software for Mac link. You will see the software download dialog. Save the installation file to your computer. Install the software by double clicking the installation file icon. Follow all the software prompts until the installation is complete. Turn off the motorcycle's ignition switch. Access the main body of the Easy Can. Remove the rubber plug covering the USB port. Put the plug in a safe place. The Easy Can installation kit includes a USB A to micro USB cable. Insert the USB A end into a vacant USB port on your computer. Insert the micro USB end into the Easy Can. Turn on the motorcycle's ignition switch. Launch the EasyCan software on your computer. You will see the Hex EasyCan configuration tool. If the disconnection error message appears, make sure the USB cable is securely seated in both the computer and EasyCan USB ports. Make sure the EasyCan is receiving power from the battery. Make sure that the EasyCan fuse is not blown. And make sure that the EasyCan is properly connected to both of the motorcycle's CAN bus connectors. The third step in setting up the Easy Can is to make sure the Easy Can sends power to the right accessories under the right conditions and at the right times. This is called channel configuration. Open the channel configuration dialog on the Hex Easy Can configuration tool. When you install the Easy Can and accessories on your motorcycle, you will have done it according to one of the available configuration options. If the Easy Can is fitted to a liquid cooled R1200 or to a K1600, you will see four different configuration options. If the Easy Can is fitted to an oil cooled R1200 or to an F800, you will see three different configuration options. Click the correct configuration option now. Click the OK button. For safety reasons, you must set the correct cutoff amperage limit for each power output channel you will be using. The software amperage limits act in the same way as normal fuses. To calculate the safe cutoff amperage limit for a power channel, find out how much current in amps the accessory uses at full power. If you do not know the amperage draw value, you can calculate the value as follows. Find out the amount of power in watts that the accessory uses at full power. You can get this information from the manufacturer of the accessory or from the packaging that the accessory came in. Add a 50% margin for power spikes to the wattage figure. Divide the total power consumption figure by the 12 volts of the motorcycle's electrical system. If two spotlights are being powered from one output channel, add the wattage values plus the 50% power spike margin together before dividing. The power draw plus power spike margin yields peak current of 6.75 amps. Rounded to the nearest hole up a number, the peak current is 7 amps. Click the fuse link. The amperage options for that channel will be shown. Click the option for the correct amperage cutoff limit. Be careful not to set the cutoff limit at a level that is too high. If you installed accessory spotlights, set the brightness and other functions of the lights using the auxiliary lights section of the Hex Easy Can configuration tool. 
If you've installed an Easy Can on an F800 or oil cooled R1200, and you have installed accessory spotlights that have third wire for light intensity control, click the three wire mode option. This will allow three wire spotlights to dim and brighten optimally when you adjust the auxiliary light sliders. The Easy Can can determine whether it is day or night using the ambient light sensor on the motorcycle's instrument display. First, set the brightness of the spotlights during times when only the motorcycle's low beam is active by clicking and dragging the sliders for the daytime setting and the nighttime setting. Next, set the brightness of the spotlights during times when both high and low beams are active. Click and drag the sliders for the daytime setting and the nighttime setting. If you want your accessory spotlights to turn off on either side of the motorcycle when the turn signal is active on that side, click the Off when turn signal active option. This option is especially useful if your spotlights are very bright or are mounted close to the direction indicators. If three-wire mode is active and the off when turn signal active option is enabled, all accessory spotlights will be turned off if either turn signal is active, regardless of the chosen channel configuration. If three-wire mode is disabled and channel configuration 1 or 2 has been chosen, only the spotlight on the same side as an active turn signal will be disabled. If three-wire mode is disabled and channel configuration 4 is selected, all accessory spotlights will be turned off if either turn signal is active. If you want the accessory spotlights to flash rapidly when the horn button is pressed, click the strobe when horn active option. If you want the accessory spotlights to flash rapidly three times when the flash to pass button is pressed, click the strobe on flash to pass option. On the road, you can activate this feature by pressing the flash to pass button three times within a second. If you want all the accessory spotlights to flash out of sequence with the turn signals when hazard lighting is active, click the Inverse Flashing When Hazards Active option. This option is especially useful if your spotlights are very bright or are mounted close to the direction indicators. If you want all the accessory spotlights to give more or less light than you specified using the auxiliary light sliders whenever you press the Flash to Pass button, adjust the intensity of the spotlights by opening the Extra Settings submenu. Adjust the relative brightness of the spotlights by clicking and dragging the Adjust Left-Right LED Flashing Intensity slider. When the Flash to Pass button is pressed, the spotlight intensity will increase or decrease to the relative level specified by the slider. To disable this function, drag the slider to the left until the intensity value is 0%. If your BMW is equipped with a BMW Motorrad multi-controller, you can adjust the brightness of your accessory spotlights while riding. To adjust the brightness of your spotlights while on the move, hold the multi-controller to the left for more than 3 seconds to activate the brightness adjustment function. Then, rotate the multi-controller upward to increase brightness, or rotate the multi-controller downward to decrease brightness. When the lights are at the needed brightness, release the multi-controller. When the brightness adjustment is complete, hold the multi-controller to the right for more than 3 seconds. Alternatively, leave the multi-controller alone for more than 10 seconds. Note that you cannot adjust spotlight brightness on the move if your motorcycle doesn't have the multi-controller. If you've installed one or more rear lights that will be used as auxiliary lights or brake lights, set the functions of the lights using the Rear or Brake Lights section of the Hex Easy Can Configuration Tool. Set the brightness of the auxiliary rear light by clicking and dragging the sliders. Note that for safety reasons, these controls do not affect the function of the standard rear light. The upper slider controls the intensity of the auxiliary rear light when it functions as a parking light or quarter light. If this slider is set at greater than 0%, the auxiliary rear light will be active whenever the ignition switch is on. The lower slider controls the intensity of the auxiliary rear light when it functions as a brake light. If this slider is set at greater than 0%, the auxiliary rear light will be active whenever you use the brakes. If you want the light to act only as a rear brake light, set the rear light slider to 0%. Note that if the rear light intensity value is the same as the brake light intensity value, the brake light function is disabled. The rear light intensity can never be greater than the brake light intensity. You can also adjust the flash function of the auxiliary rear light. 
To set the brake light at constant brightness while it is active, click the No Flashing button. To set the brake light to flash while it is active, click the Flash on Braking button. If the brake light is a nuisance because it flashes at a speed threshold that is too high or too low, open the Extra Settings submenu. Click and drag the Adjust Brake Nuisance Flashing Threshold slider to the right to increase the vehicle speed at which the flashing function activates, or to the left to decrease the speed. To set the brake light to activate to California legal standards, click the California Legal Flashing button. If you select this option and apply the brakes, the brake light will flash 4 times per second for a single second, then stay on at steady brightness until the brakes are released. To set the brake light to flash if your speed is greater than 50 km an hour or 30 miles an hour, and the motorcycle detects that you are decelerating at more than 21 km per hour per second, click the Emergency Stop Signal button. This function works in two ways. If you brake hard and keep the brakes applied, the brake light will flash while you brake and continue to flash until you release the brakes. If you suddenly back off the throttle but do not apply the brakes, the brake light will flash. When the deceleration stops, the brake light will go out. If you need to adjust the deceleration limit because the emergency stop signal function is too sensitive or not sensitive enough, open the Extra Settings submenu. Click and drag the Adjust ESS Deceleration Sensitivity slider to the right to make the emergency stop signal function more sensitive or to the left to make it less sensitive. You can also enable California Legal Flashing together with Emergency Stop Signal Flashing. To do this, click the California Legal with Emergency Stop Signal button. To deactivate all accessory lights on a liquid-cooled R1200 or K1600, press and hold the Turn Signal Cancel button for 3 seconds. To deactivate all accessory lights on an oil-cooled R1200 or F800, press and hold the Trip or Info button for 3 seconds. To reactivate the accessory lights, press and hold the button a second time, again for 3 seconds. Activating and deactivating the auxiliary lights in this way does not affect the operation of the standard lights, the horn, or ignition switched accessory power. The EasyCan is designed to cut power to the accessory ignition power output channel within a set time after the ignition switch is turned off. It does this to avoid power draw from accessories such as GPS devices that might otherwise discharge the battery while the motorcycle isn't running. Set the Accessory Ignition Supply Timeout Limit by clicking and dragging the Timeout slider. When the ignition is switched off, the accessory power output channel will receive power for the selected period before power is shut off. If you need to deactivate the accessory power output channel, click the Accessory Power button. To reactivate the accessory power output channel, click the Accessory Power button a second time. When you've finished configuring the EasyCan, Close the HEX EasyCAN configuration tool and turn off the motorcycle's ignition switch. Access the main body of the EasyCAN and remove the USB cable. Note that the rubber plug covering the USB port can only fit correctly one way. Reinsert the rubber plug. The EasyCAN and the accessories connected to it are now ready to be used. Thanks for watching. You can find more information on the HEX EasyCAN at hexeasycan.com